most of you guys find speaking the most difficult part of learning English. So we decided to create this big long video talking about the aspects of spoken English. What do you do if you forget a word? How to speak fast and sound more natural? How not to be afraid of speaking English when you talk to a native speaker? And how to practice English if you have no one to practice with? Watch this video because it's gonna help you stop worrying and start speaking English. I am afraid to speak English. People will laugh at me. What if I start a conversation with a native speaker and I suddenly forget words? What if I just can't support a conversation? Like, I won't be able to use my English. I have so many fears. What should I do? Hey guys, welcome to Lingua Marina. Today we're gonna talk about those questions uh, that arise in your head whenever you are uh, confronted with a situation to speak to a native speaker in English. I just want to say, like, first of all, I, I, I'm pretty sure you've heard that many times that it's just all in your head, but I know we need to kind of dig deeper and uh, talk about your fears because I had those fears. Like, even now when I speak German, because I'm a perfectionist, um, I get very nervous because I know I make mistakes and I know I forget words and I know everything like this happens and uh, my face turns red and uh, I just you know and and it actually starts happening like when I'm relaxed my German is a lot better like if I'm in an environment just talking to friends or just talking to someone at a store it would be like really smooth language when I start thinking like, oh my God, like this is one of the reasons I stopped recording videos about German, just because it's it's been declining and uh, I have those fears, but I also have them in English. But with English, I understood that English is a tool, it's an instrument that I use to improve my life. And without it, you know, I won't be able to achieve my new goals. I won't be able to get to new levels of um, whatever, YouTube, of my company's development. So today, I'm gonna start with fear number one. People are gonna laugh at me. The only time I've been laughed at uh, in terms of my English is uh, when, uh, like, laugh in real life. Like, I, I get mocked about my accent a lot on social media, but it happens because I get hundreds of thousands of views and I understand that even kittens get dislikes on YouTube and there will be people who are unhappy with whatever I'm doing and just because I'm doing it they will be posting bad comments and hating me for whatever I do. But I also understand sometimes it's actually good to have that feedback because people tell me, oh Marina that was wrong, that phrase was incorrect, but they're not laughing at me, they're telling me how to improve and I accept that with gratitude. So the only time I've been laughed at actually happened uh, when I was talking to my friend and uh, I, I, I told him I was so hooked up with this person like I wanted to say that we're really connected with a person but I used a phrasal verb to hook up with someone and it actually means have a sexual relationship and this not what it was not what I meant and another time it, it happened recently on, on Instagram I came to a butcher store and I posted a story that I missed his meat and meat in American conversational English when you say I missed his meat uh, means I missed his penis and again people laughed at me but i thought it was funny like it's not like and, and it was like dms people were, oh my god oh my god marina do you know it has a second meaning uh, it and it's not like they are angry at me for making that mistake it was like you know a friendly advice so i've never ever had like people in real life like laugh at me like say oh my god your english is so bad what are you doing here never ever happened in my life and I started practicing English at the age of 14 and I was hanging out with really mean, like teenagers can be really mean and uh, they can tell really bad things in your face. But never has that ever happened to me because people understand that I'm making an effort to be understood. They understand that I come from a completely different culture and uh, that I've never spoken English to my parents or to my grandparents. So. The only exception here is social media. Like if you're speaking English in social media, just be ready to get those hate comments. And even if you're perfect in English, even if you're 120 out of 120 on TOEFL and you post a video how you got that score, you would still, like if it goes viral, you would still get comments from people. It's impossible. Your English is not good enough, etc. Like there would always be people in social media hating you. But in real life, 
there's like this tiny chance it's gonna happen, but it's, it's not gonna happen, guys. Native speakers, especially Americans, especially British people, they're very friendly. In real life, uh, people who I met, people who I talked to in English, even when I was intermediate, they were really friendly and really supportive. So it's all in our heads. And uh, I think if you have this fear in English, like people would laugh at you, you probably have it in other aspects of your life. So it's just another reason for you to sit down with yourself and think about like, I don't have to be liked by everyone. And again, I am a person who has this feeling all the time. I want to be liked by everyone. I want it. I'm fighting this. Like once I started my channels, I realized I can't be liked by everyone, but it was really hurting me every time I read something negative about myself. And it took me a while to understand and to realize that my goal is to use my talents, is to grow as an entrepreneur, YouTuber, whatever, as a mom, and do the best that I can. What other people think about me, it's other people's business. They have their own understanding of reality. They have their own experience. Maybe they just have a bad day, but it doesn't have anything to do with me. And if you want to dig deeper in this problem, I really uh, advise you to read a book, uh, The Courage to Be Disliked. It's like one of those books that I started reading last year. I think last year I had this, I don't know, personality crisis, but I was like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I'm afraid to do this because people would comment and they would be unhappy with what I do. And I started just doing a lot of psychological research and I started doing reading a lot of books. And that was one of the books that really, really helped me. Like it just talks about how you can't control other people's emotions. You can't control what they think of you. What you have to do is focus on what you can do the best is focus on your goals and uh, start and achieve them. Another thing I could recommend, watch the one on Netflix. It talks just about this woman entrepreneur uh, who's a little ruthless and she's not like a role model that I want you to follow, but it just talks about like how she deals with all the problems that arise. When I was thinking like if I were at her place, I would have definitely given up, but she continued going. I really encourage you to read those books, to watch the one on Netflix and to just read interviews uh, related to this topic because this would help you in your life in general, not just with the English language. And of course, you will realize that, you know, the majority of people won't laugh at you. And if they will, it is their problem. It's not your problem. You're doing your best. You're practicing your English. You are putting effort into being understood by people who don't even speak your language and don't even make an effort to learn your language. Okay, psychology class is over. Let's move up to some practical advice regarding other things that you can do. Uh, so there is another fear. What if the conversation gets too complicated and uh, I won't be able to support it? I also get this fear, like for example, again, I, I can't really relate to this in English right now because my language is pretty, I would say pretty advanced to talk about all kinds of topics, but with German, I can totally relate. And when people start asking me about business, I understand that I will start a conversation. I will talk about my company, but if they start digging deeper, I will be like, oh my God, this is too complicated. And um, in 2018, I had to have a surgery in Germany and I was surprised. I was actually able to communicate with doctors and nurses about medical stuff. Because basically when we talk about English, we have 1000 words that make up 86% of the conversation. and. What you really need to know, if, if you know those 1000 words, if you go into a specific conversation, you can always ask for definitions of like specific words. So it was in Germany doing that surgery. I was like, oh, and what, what is this in German? I can say that in English or I can show you on Google. And once I learned like five or seven words that I needed that were related to that surgery, the conversation became really easy because you don't need to know like the whole, I don't know, surgery, medical, business vocabulary to support a an advanced conversation. All you need is those 1000 words. And also if you're like, oh, I don't know how many words I know right now, this doesn't actually matter. If you understand this video, that means you know enough words to support a conversation. So start practicing. And if you forget a word, if you don't know the term, if you forget a word, you can just Google it on your phone with Google Translate and show uh, your party this, this word and you will be totally fine. And this is, by the way, the way you learn this word really fast. Another question is that, what if I feel shy? What if I stop and freeze? Okay, this can happen as well if you are too nervous about the conversation. The trick that helps me a lot is to pretend that you're someone else. Because again, stopping and freezing has to do something uh, with what's going 
on with you internally. Like maybe you're again thinking that people are gonna laugh at you. And just, there are so many thoughts in your head that you can't just process them. So imagine that you're a different person. You probably, if you're speaking to a native speaker, you're probably in a new country, nobody knows you. And once this conversation is over, you will part ways with this person. So try to pretend you're your favorite movie character. Try to pretend you're an American if you're in America. Try to pretend that you are this famous blogger that you really, really like. I don't know, try to pretend tend to be someone else just for this conversation it just lets your fears go and uh, it helps you become more confident when you speak what if i offend someone uh, that's another fear and one thing i want you to remember here is that when we talk to a person people pay attention to our body language to our facial expressions to our emotions and even if you say something incorrectly in english they would understand you didn't really mean it and also they would understand like if they tell you about something and you're like you don't understand but you just say yes and a lot of times people will tell you but you didn't understand right and they would explain in another way it's okay to say, oh, I didn't mean that. Sorry, was that offensive? Because my English is not good enough. It's okay. But if you're smiling, if you're open, then people will understand 100% that you didn't mean to offend them. That it was like, oh my God, I'm sorry. That is something that we're used to in our culture or I mixed up the word, people would understand. Now let's wrap up this video with a couple of tips. Uh, if you have an important conversation in English coming up, maybe you have an interview with a university, or I remember when we were preparing for Y Combinator interview, it's an accelerator here in Silicon Valley. The worst mistake that you can do is actually overthink. It makes sense to prepare. It makes sense to go through questions that were asked before in this kind of environment, like go through questions that universities ask during the interview, go through questions that, uh, people are normally asked, etc. But I would say take your time, prepare for two hours, but don't take too long because when it takes too long, when it takes days, we over prepared for a Y Combinator interview. And instead of relaxing before it, instead of just catching the vibe of Silicon Valley, we were just brainstorming how we're gonna fight that small company that is trying to do the same thing. And people there didn't even know about it. And like now when I look back at it, it's important to know what you're talking about, like to tell your story, to tell, I don't know why you're interested in this or that university, this or that subject, but don't overthink. Like they would probably ask basic questions or if they ask some complicated questions, it is almost impossible to predict what they're gonna ask. So learn some basic things, but then let yourself relax. Uh, watch something in English. Just put yourself into that environment before the conversation or before the test so that your brain switches from your language into English. It will be a lot easier. The next tip, be nervous and do it anyways. Michael Jordan once said, being nervous isn't bad. It just means something important is happening. So my tip here, and uh, I did an interview with Justin Kahn on Silicon Valley Girl, and he said, don't be afraid of your emotions, don't suppress them. Tell yourself, okay, I am nervous about this conversation I'm gonna have in English. It is fine. I understand that I'm nervous because it is an important conversation. I understand that my English is maybe not good enough and I haven't practiced a lot, but I'm gonna do it anyways. And uh, I'm gonna use this conversation as practice. And after the conversation, I'm gonna sit down and think what was good and what was bad. I was really bad at like, analyzing things afterwards because I'm this perfectionist. And when I shoot a video, I don't wanna see it just because I understand I could have done better. And this is an endless process, but I actually taught myself to look at numbers. I taught myself to actually sit down and think what I did wrong and what could be done better. And it helps a lot with your progression. So after the conversation, sit down with yourself and think, did I do everything I could do? And if not, you know, just have some tips for yourself for the next conversation. And I have this note in my iPhone where I just put in things that I could do better in my videos. And uh, I have those tips uh, that I always look at before an important video uh, and uh, just remind myself that I make those mistakes. It is okay. It's good that I know about them and I'm gonna be better in the next video. The next tip, do it until it feels normal. Just keep having those conversations in English. Keep being shy, keep being nervous. At some stage, you're gonna be tired of it, especially if you're in an English speaking country or if you're applying to universities, like I have a lot of people here in the US who are applying in the universities, mostly 
children of my friends oh my god i'm so old uh but <laughs> they're applying to like 24 colleges at once and to, you know interview number 10 you just get tired of it and you just get used to it and you don't feel nervous anymore so keep doing also adopt the growth mindset something we've already talked about like i am bad at speaking english my accent is not good enough yet but i'm using this as a way to practice and i'm using this exact conversation as my way to improve learn to laugh at yourself you know life is simple we overcomplicate so many things we tend to think that this meeting is game changer it is not you can always do another meeting there's so many people in the world there's so many opportunities and if you don't get any result from the upcoming conversation doesn't matter you can do a lot more conversations the most important thing is that you have yourself you have your time you have your brain that helps you speak english like don't create problems for yourself enjoy life we only have one life and i want you to go ahead and enjoy it and look at everything from a positive perspective especially if it's something like smaller like a conversation with a native speaker come on uh, it's gonna be fine life is easy smile tell yourself that if not today you're gonna make it tomorrow if not tomorrow you're gonna make it in a week it is fine you'll get there Hey guys, welcome to Lingua Marina. Today we're gonna talk about a, it's a psychological topic when you forget words. It happens to me all that time. I'm talking to a person and the worst thing, I kind of had this word in my head just right now, but now when I'm talking about this, I forgot this word. Like it happens to me all the time and I can totally understand you. Uh, it happens a lot at any level of English. And today we're gonna talk about ways that you can navigate through this situation and hopefully you will remember some of the methods and tips that i will give you and that you would use them later when you're talking to native speakers or just when you're speaking english and you forget a word so first of all a really basic tip super basic try and say this word in your language maybe if you're from finland maybe that would be a little tricky because i know finnish language is one of those weirdest languages when even computer doesn't sound like computer because if I say computer, this is a Russian word, people in America would understand what I mean. Like, you can try and make it sound more American computer and people would understand. Because there are so many words these days that are very, very similar across many languages. So whenever you forget something, like if you really want to say a word, because there are other ways you can navigate through the situation, but if you really want to say a word, try and say it in your own language maybe something comes out of this if not no problem i see people do it all the time here so i have a gardener who is from mexico and um he's english i would say he's pretty intermediate and sometimes he just forgets words he would just say something in spanish and i was like oh okay because i learned italian they're kind of similar languages and that helps a lot for us to communicate with each other and the second tip just ask a person uh, who you're talking to to remind you was that word and americans use it all the time oh what was that what was that word um oh yeah like what do you call it sorry oh yeah that one so americans use these phrases all the time so just write them down and whenever you forget a word just ask a person who you're talking to the next tip is to remember the stats that i'm just about to give you so there was this guy a scientist dr mehrabian and he analyzed the speech and uh, he concluded that 7% of what we understand is verbal, just 7%. 38% is vocal, like your intonations, and 55% uh, is visual. That means that you just need to use your visual signs. The problem with phone calls here is that you can't do that. Or if you're on Zoom, then you can, but this is why a lot of people struggle with making phone calls in English. But if you're talking to a real person, if you're on Zoom doing a video call, then use your hands, use your acting capabilities to show what you mean. Like if you're struggling to say a dog, you can say woof woof, you can say meow meow, <laughs> whatever. Something I forgot a couple of days ago, I forgot the, the word blow kisses, like when you do this, this is called blow kisses and my daughter loves to do that. And um, I wanted to ask her to do blow kisses, but I forgot how to say it. And I just said, do this. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend this method during the exam, but something you can totally use in normal life. The next tip is actually to stop 
and paraphrase the whole thing. Because again, I know where it is coming from. Sometimes you either had this word on the tip of your tongue and it just evaporated when you started saying a phrase. It is probably a complicated, super advanced word. It happens to me all the time again. And um, the way to deal with it is to just stop a phrase and say it in a completely different way. Because you are probably translating in your head from your own language to, to English, and then you forget the word and then you're stuck. The best thing to do there is to go back to the beginning of the phrase and to say it in different words. And again, this is, I'm not relating to words that you can forget, like object words, cat, dog, blow kisses. You can't really paraphrase something in order to remember that word, but something that brings more complexity to your speech, like evaporated, like the word that I used, maybe go back to the beginning of the sentence and don't say the word just evaporated from my mouth. Say, I forgot this word, like use easier, words. This helps me a lot. Again, this is like we're discussing different methods. This one is really advanced. Like when you just want to sound too advanced, when you want to sound like a native speaker, but you realize you're not yet there in terms of your vocabulary, it's okay to go back, to stop, paraphrase and sound like an intermediate person. But at least the other person would understand you and there is nothing bad in sounding like an intermediate person. The next tip is to just try and come up with words yourself. Like some words in English, they're just a mix of different words like water, fall, obviously, right? This uh, example with blowing kisses, like you're blowing kisses. That is obvious as well. So if you just forget a word, try to make it up. Try to take it from French or Italian because 30% of English vocabulary was adopted from French. So you can actually use that language as well. If you know French, by the way, try to use French words. And of course, there are other tips that are super useful, learning synonyms, but this is not something you would do in a situation where you forgot a word, but something you can uh, remember now and do something later on when you're studying English. Remember synonyms, learn words and synonyms, intelligent, smart, clever, witty, etc. Like learn them in batches. This way, when you forget one of the words, you remember the synonyms. Another tip, use the dictionary that explains the word in English. Because again, when you forget a word, at least you can explain it in English because you've read the explanation. You have something there in your mind. We're not using 100% of our brain capacity. When we read something, it's somewhere there in our minds. And we've all watched the movies where people like are able to memorize everything. It's just our brain is capable of a lot of things. And uh, don't underestimate the power of using such a dictionary and reading the explanation of the word in English, because later on something will click and you would remember that explanation. Today, we're going to talk about finding people to practice your English language. And I know speaking is the hardest part for a lot of students. And by the way, right now in comments below, please let me know what is your main struggle with the English language right now? I remember when I was at school and I didn't live in the US, I was desperate to find people to practice my English with. And whenever I saw somebody from abroad, I would be like the first person to talk to them. And I'm gonna share some of the tips that are just common that other people use as well. So first of all, baby, well, baby, teenage Marina, about around 14 years old, 14 to 16 years old. This is um, the time when I came back from the UK for the first time. And I realized that my English is nothing close to native speaker level. And I thought I was so proficient, like because I started learning English when I was four. And then I went to school uh, when I was seven, where, when we had English every single day. And I thought I am just perfect. But then I came to the UK. I couldn't understand people. People couldn't understand me. It was a complete mess. And I felt really as an outlier because I couldn't communicate with people. And when I came back to Russia, I told myself, Marina, you have to solve this problem. Marina, you have to go out there and practice English. So number one thing that I did, I started going to museums in my city and I was lucky to be born and raised in a city called St. Petersburg, which is one of the best cities in the world in terms of architecture and museums museums and we have the Hermitage and the Hermitage is uh, this huge museum that has a lot of art and uh, it attracts a lot of tourists. So I would just go to that museum and I had a free pass as a Russian student. So I went into that museum 
and I just looked at people who were confused or like trying to find their way and I, I don't know how to explain this but you can always tell whether a person is Russian or uh, whether a person is a foreigner so I could tell from like 10 meters or 20 meters that I see some foreigners and they're lost I would just approach them and say, hey, do you need any help? I was just, you know, I was desperate to practice English. And this is something that you can do once. I don't know if museums are open in your country or if you have any museums in your city, but try that. Just walk around the museum, look at people, see tourists, approach them and ask them if they need any help. Um, that helped me a lot. And there were a couple ladies who were lost and then I showed them the way and we kept walking around the city for like an hour or so and we kept practicing English. So that was really useful. Number two, another thing that you can do, find a British council or US consulate or embassy in your country and just write them an email or reach out to them or see if they have any events. Again, depends on the country. In in my country, Russia, when I was back at school, they had a lot of events for people to just come over. Like British Council would have weekly meetups where people who like English literature. US Embassy would have different events like Flex, which is kind of a competition where uh, winners can go to the US. But even if you take part in that competition, you get to talk to people from the embassy, Americans. And then another thing US Embassy did, they organized movie nights. And again, you could come there and talk to people and this is what I did. I was a subscriber on their Facebook pages. I was following them everywhere and whenever I had time to attend the event and again, I would just practice English. And uh, these were my favorite types of events because you're not just talking to random people, you're talking to people from the embassy. And um, they were a huge inspiration for my future career because I looked at them and I thought, I want to be like those people. I want to travel the world. I want to spread my culture around. And uh, I, I would always ask them, like, how did you end up being a consul? Or how, how did you end up working in, a, in an embassy? These are my favorite types of events. So definitely reach out to those organizations and definitely follow them everywhere uh, in terms of like social media and like stalking. <laughs> follow them on social media and see what kinds of events they organize um, in your city or in your country. Number three. There are also other types of clubs and communities for English speakers. I was a part of such a community, again, in St. Petersburg. It was a really small community, maybe 20 people. I was introduced by a friend from school and he attended their events regularly, but basically what they did, they would invite someone, even Russian, like they would just invite someone who's good at English to speak about something. So we had a lady who wrote a book and she was talking about this book in English. Oh, we had a mayor of Edinburgh who just came to St. Petersburg and he was talking about Edinburgh. We had uh, somebody who was translating English books into Russian. We had a CEO of a store where they sold books in English. So different interesting people, again, holding conversations in English. Google something like this, you would definitely have something, at least online, something that you can attend. Oh, we're gonna talk about online resources a little later in this video, but I wanna focus on offline first. I don't know, just, I, I like offline communication and I've been missing offline communication a lot um, in the past year when the whole thing started. If you think that your English is not enough, to start speaking, first of all, you're wrong. Uh, if you understand this video, you probably have a lot of knowledge to help you start speaking. But the second thing that you can do is take one of my courses. Uh, I have a course that is specifically for people probably like you, intermediate, have a lot of knowledge, but are afraid to speak. We focus a lot on how to actually start speaking. We focus a lot on how to build your speech that it sounds naturally, like all the vocabulary that you can use, grammar that you can use. The course is called Intermediate to Advanced. It starts every month, it lasts 30 days. And there you also have groups where you can communicate with others. We have special chats for people. And this is a great way to find a speaking buddy and also improve your language skills with me. The class is a pre-recorded, so you can take them from anywhere, anytime. You will get tests uh, after after every module so you will be able to practice whatever you just learned and uh, I've created this course with a professional teacher Vania who's also not a native speaker but you won't be able to tell because he's just mastering this pronunciation like he's amazing at that the link will be below and you will have a special promo code because you watched this video the next thing that you can do is go to meetup.com I don't know if it's available in your country necessarily, but I also know that even people who come to the US, they struggle to practice English because they end up living in a community of 
people from their country and I know there's like a huge community in New York a huge community of Russians and I was in that neighborhood and everything is in Russian like if you go to a bank it's Bank of America but everything is in Russian and people are Russian uh, you know and I know there are Chinatowns there are India towns and a lot of those smaller communities which are great in terms of like when you come there you feel like at home but if you're trying to practice English it might be really hard so if you are in that situation go to meetup.com and see what kinds of events are organized around your area and attend those events again they're probably all online right now but i'm not sure because it depends on the country where you are in california almost everything is uh, still online but the thing is this site meetup.com has a separate page for people who want to practice languages and they have different groups all over the globe in small and big cities all the links will be below so you will have all the resources that you can use later on when you decide to start practicing english and i hope that you decide right after this video because practice makes perfect another thing that i've seen trending on different social media like instagram facebook whatsapp etc especially because i'm an influencer and i have get a lot of dms from people like oh can you practice english with me or if i organize a group i have like a big telegram channel and uh, some people complain that they became a part of this telegram channel and they just got random dms from people who want to practice english i don't think that's the best idea just reaching out to people and cold text texting them like hey can you practice english with me because it is a little weird i it, it might work and uh i found a friend in germany this way i was just randomly texting people on skype to practice german and then we actually met in person uh well not a friend but like a person i know and he was willing to communicate with me he was the same age and uh it was kind of okay but this is the only thing that ever worked for me in terms of like cold texting people what you can do is you can join ielts and toefl groups on facebook and uh, whatsapp or whatever you're able to find in your country and your city or whatever you're able to find online because when people are preparing for TOEFL and IELTS, they tend to be more serious. Their English language skills tend to be better and this would enhance your experience. There are also some other apps that were created necessarily for finding a speaking buddy. The apps are Speak Native, Open Talk, Speaky, Halo, and there are many others. From all the platforms, I really liked Speak Native just because you have to create an introductory video about yourself before you start communicating with others. And that really helps you determine whether you want to talk to that person because you want to see their level of English, their interests, etc. And when you have this introductory video, it really helps. Let's talk a little more about offline. So whenever you're planning your next travel, think about taking a language course instead of just being a tourist and uh, i've been promoting this for years i'm a product of language travel my company lingua trip helps you guys travel around the world and book courses all over the world so if you are thinking of going to the uk or canada or another english-speaking country just make your research because whenever i compared like staying at a hotel versus taking a course and staying at a local host family the second option is always cheaper because it is a student option you get student rates and you get to practice english a lot you get to communicate with students from all over the world and of course you get to communicate with native speakers because all the teachers and schools are native speakers the link will be below another thing that you can do i don't know if you want to do it but i did it just calling american companies again you can get a viber app maybe pay like couple dollars to to make calls and you will get like unlimited calls for a month and just call american companies and ask them like if you're dreaming of going to new york and staying at this hotel where they shot home alone if you want to stay in the hotel just call them and ask like hey i wanted to ask if you have any rooms available for next week and what's the rate can i get a discount like just just that kind of thing it is their job to answer and who knows maybe you'll end up coming and the last but not the least, my Instagram is a resource where you can find a lot of people. And I feel that people on Instagram, in terms of like writing down in comments below, they're more responsive than on YouTube. So if you just go to my Instagram, subscribe to my profile, and then whenever I post my next post, you can just write in comments below that you're looking for someone to practice English and you're from this country, like talk about yourself. I am a student of this university from this country and I'm looking for somebody from another country who doesn't speak my language to practice English because my audience is really international. I have people from all over the world. And uh, 
Good chances are somebody would respond. Just make sure that you write that comment very soon after my post comes out because this is when it gets a lot of traction, a lot of attention, and this is your way of finding a buddy. So in the previous video, I gave you eight methods to start practicing English right away. Let me know down in comments below, which one would you start using now? And please go into details. I'm gonna read your comments. Hey guys, welcome to Lingua Marina. Today we're gonna talk about improving your speaking skills in English. I hear this so much. Marina, I can understand English, but I can't speak it. Whenever I see a native speaker, I want to hide. Whenever I hear people speaking English, I want to hide. What do I do? How do I overcome the situation? So my best advice here would be like, talk to natives every single day. Yes, you would be scared at first, but then you're gonna get better and better. And this is what study abroad trips are for. And this is why I started LinguaTrip, where we help people find a study abroad program. By the way, the link will be below. And some English speaking countries are open and are welcoming English language students. But I know that not everyone can afford going on those trips. And I know that some of you have never seen native speakers in your life that was my case when i lived in russia i would go to different museums and i would listen in the streets if there are any native speakers and i would try and approach them because i needed to practice my english badly but you can start preparing yourself now you can start preparing for that situation where you will encounter a native speaker and you will start your real english conversation so tip number one is to have a cheat sheet. If you watch my channel for a while, you know that I've created a lot of videos, like 50 common phrases in English, 25 common phrases in English. The thing is, when you learn a language and phrases, it's a lot easier to speak it compared to when you learn English or another language and words. Because once you learn phrases, you know how to communicate using those phrases. So having like a cheat sheet where you have those 50 common phrases in English written down, learn some of them. At least like, how are you doing? You know, instead of thinking, oh, what should I say? How are you? Or how is your day going? Whatever, you learn one. How are you doing? And you know what this phrase means. Learn all of those intro phrases. I wanted to ask you if. I was just wondering if. You know, all of those phrases, again, they take away the pain of thinking, how should I phrase this? And once you're pronouncing this phrase, you can actually think about the content that comes later. And this advice also works for exams. So for example, if you're taking TOEFL or IELTS, and if you're afraid of the speaking part, learn the templates, learn the phrases. They're gonna help you sound smoother. And the same with conversational English. Learn the phrases, learn the structure, write down all the phrases into your phone, have them in notes, and use them when you speak. The next tip is to chat with either Siri or Amazon Alexa or whatever you have on Google. Okay, Google. I've noticed that so many times when some of my Russian friends started talking to Siri, she would not understand what they meant because of their pronunciation. And this is a very good practice because if Siri does not understand you, something is wrong with your pronunciation. Yes, sometimes they have bugs and sometimes you just pronounce the word in a different way. But the thing is, it is really helpful because you're getting instant feedback. If Siri didn't get you, then something was wrong. The next tip that I use a lot, I used to use a lot, I no longer use it because I think I've mastered this, but anyways, when I was not living in the US, I would talk to myself every single day. And whenever you're doing something in your head, just say it. I am recording this video for my channel. Oh, I just got a message from my friend. I'm about to call my mom. I'm about to go to bed. And whatever you can do in English, just do it in English. Just talk to yourself in your head. If you pronounce that, that's even better. Because sometimes when we're thinking about something in our head, we just, you know, if we forgot the word, we just skip it. But if you're trying to pronounce it, you're like, oh my God, I forgot this word. I need to look it up. So pronounce everything where you're thinking. When you're home alone, it's a lot easier. The next technique is called imitation technique. When you watch something on TV, you watch something on Netflix, you watch something with subtitles on YouTube, you can hear a phrase, read it, then pause, and not only try to repeat this phrase with the same intonation, try to paraphrase it. Try to use some different words, because in this way you would be sure that you understood the phrase and you would be practicing other vocabulary as well. So when you pause the movie or when you pause a video, just imagine that you're the character and try to pronounce that phrase in the same manner, replacing some words. 
I also suggest that you exaggerate whenever you're mimicking someone because it's always like that with the language. If you want to sound more natural, you would sound like you're being a clown to your brain and you would sound like you're exaggerating a lot to your brain and that's the right thing to do because when you are practicing a foreign accent it would sound foreign to your brain so try to exaggerate as much as you can whenever you sound like a crazy person to yourself that means that you're on the right track and if you do everything that I mentioned in this video, your goal is to start thinking in English. That is a little hard. It's like meditation. When you meditate, people tell you that you have to stop thinking at all. And whenever you notice that you're thinking about something, you just notice that you're thinking about something and stop again. The same technique with thinking in English. You think in English and then you realize you're actually thinking in your own language. You don't punish yourself. You tell yourself, okay, I was actually thinking in my own language. So I just stop here and I try to think in English again. And then again, once your brain tells you, oh my God, let's think in my own language, you switch back again. And uh, the more you surround yourself with English speech every single day, the more you start thinking in English. That's just the way it works. And it is okay that after some time you would comment down below here and say, Marina, but it's impossible to think in English when you don't live in an English speaking country. And I would totally agree with you. But practicing the skill before going to an English speaking country would really help you because I tried to do that. And when I came to the UK after week one, of not speaking my own language, I started thinking in English. Of course, when I came back home, I started thinking in Russian again, but then I mastered the switch. So right now, whenever I have to speak English, I think in English. And whenever I have to speak in Russian, I think in Russian. And then the next level is switching between languages because there is something I don't like doing, but I keep doing it, is using English words in my Russian speech, uh, which really makes it a little dirtier. But that's the whole new game. This is like advanced level. And once you master this, you're like up for advanced. Thank you guys so much for watching this video up to the very end. I hope you enjoyed this content and I hope it would help you speak English faster and better. By the way, if you want to sound more American, if you want to practice American speech, we have a whole course for you prepared by my friend Venia, who has an amazing American accent who mastered it himself, who taught me my American accent as well. The link will be below. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In one of the last live streams, you asked me, Marina, what do I do if I understand the language but I cannot speak it. Guess what? I had the same problem. And I can give you a few tips that really helped me overcome this problem. So if you're interested, please continue watching this video. Back to San Francisco. Our minds may change. Thing number one that you have to understand is that our brain is a magic thing. It actually has all of the information. Because sometimes you think, oh my God, I have been learning English for two years and I don't see the progress. But the thing is, you've actually learned a lot of stuff during this two years. You've learned vocabulary, you've learned grammar, you've learned how to speak. But guess what? You haven't had practice. And that's your problem. Like, Everything is inside, everything is there, but you need the stressful situation that would help this information come out. How do you create the stressful situation? Advice number one. Okay, you don't have to follow it, but at least, at least listen to it because it helped me. Oh my God, it helped me. Like this was one of the best things. Not the best, but second best. I started a YouTube channel in English. And I started this, this exact channel that you're watching. If you go back to my very first video, oh, you're gonna hear that I speak in a completely different manner and I had to cut out so many things because I started it when I was back in Russia and I didn't have a lot of practice of English, but I knew that I have to be regular with my videos. So I switched on the camera and started talking to the camera. And this is exactly what you can do. You don't have to post them and make them public. But I would advise you to do that because YouTube actually changed my life. You can make money with it. It's a great tool to meet new people. It's a great tool to interact with people in the comments. I would ask you to shoot a video on a topic that you love and where you think you're an expert. Post it on YouTube. There is an option to make it unlisted if you're afraid. But when I started my YouTube channel, I was also afraid, but I never shared it with my friends. So I just posted and 
made it live. By the way, if you decide to make a video on YouTube, please tag me and tag Linguatrip so we can see this video, if you're not afraid of cuts. Another advice that I will give you, of course you have to talk to native speakers, but I understand that sometimes when you start talking to them, you're like, uh, I don't understand something. Sometimes they tell something using some background knowledge I have no idea about. Well, it's okay. And I'm happy to explain some concepts that they may not understand. So don't be afraid to ask people to repeat something. If you don't understand, ask them what they meant. It is also very important to stay proactive in the conversation. So even if you don't understand, again, ask questions, maintain eye contact. I know a lot of you come from the cultures where you don't look people in the eye and I come from the same culture and I see a lot of Russian people like staring at the table when they talk. Don't do that in America. People look each other in the eye. And that's the uh, gesture of friendliness and that means that you understand the culture. Another thing, in some cultures, people would not shake hands with women or it would be like a weird handshake where you do it like this. No, in America, it's a firm handshake, even with you know girls and I shake people's hands when I go into the meetings. So follow these cultural tips as well. Ah, dominant handshake. I think America is one of the best places to study English, especially if you're interested in something else apart from English. Like I am interested in entrepreneurship. I would come to San Francisco, then have classes in the morning and then research meetup.com in the evening so I can meet fellow entrepreneurs, you know, visit offices of big companies. If you love Hollywood, go to LA. If you love design and fashion, that's New York. I love how diverse this country is and how every city is like the top city in some particular um, sphere, like, you know, business and um, entrepreneurship. So uh, select a city and come and travel. The coolest thing is that when you travel, you encounter English everywhere. I walk now, I want to buy something. I would just have to speak English because nobody speaks Russian. Well, some people speak Russian here, but this is not definitely not the language I'm going to use here. So you would have to practice. If you are coming here for the first time, I would recommend staying with a homestay because you can stay with locals and you can practice English 24-7. If you want to be more independent, there are also student residences where you stay with people from other countries and you know also communicate 24-7. But when I traveled for the first time, for the second time, for the third time, <laughs> for the fourth time, I always stayed with homestays because I just love local people. I love to connect with them and ask them questions and you know ask them to show me the best places around and you know just learning how people live here. For the conversation, uh, use really simple words and don't overcomplicate what you want to say. Like, it's okay if you don't give like 10 examples of the phenomena that you're describing. Use the words that you understand and that other people would understand so they would answer you with the same words. Because if you overcomplicate things, people will repeat you in overcomplicated phrases. Don't do that. Another thing, always have a really clear call to action. Maybe before calling a company or before talking to a native speaker, write down what you need from him. Like have it on the piece of paper or maybe in the notes on your iPhone so that you know what to ask for. And again, you know what's the goal of the whole conversation. That's theory. What you need to do again, you need to practice. The best progress that I had speaking English was actually when I traveled to the UK. I was 14 and imagine Marina like straight A student at school and she thinks that she knows everything. She's the best at English. She comes to the customs in the UK uh, and people ask her something she doesn't get. I didn't get what they told me. I was like, hello, my name is Marina uh, from Russia, yes. What? then I just didn't understand what they told me. And that's the problem, like you have to create those stressful situations where you put yourself in an environment where everybody speaks English and you can easily do it by traveling, by coming here to a language school. And I've done five language trips in my life and they definitely changed my life, they def definitely shaped me as a person. So let's go to a real language school here in San Francisco and I'll show you what it looks like to be there as a student. Let's go!
Would you laugh at somebody who has an accent? Absolutely not. I love accents. Yeah, it's part of, you know, that's part of learning a new language. You're always gonna have an accent. A lot of people think accents are really cool. That's what I keep telling. Like people sometimes like, oh, I have an accent. I won't be able to talk to other people. I'm like, I love when people speak Russian. Like <laughs> I love when they try. It doesn't matter if you do like a hundred mistakes in a simple sentence. I would just, you know, do my best to understand you. So Absolutely. same with English. You wouldn't laugh at people, right? Not at all. You would Not just encourage them to Absolutely. go out and practice. Absolutely. Don't be afraid. Ah, this is, yeah, this is This you. is me. <laughs> <laughs> Excursion trips to LA, Las Vegas. Food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's not much, but simple. Nice, you're gonna have a choice. Yeah, Best simple items. Nice. Spencer. Hey. How old was your youngest student? Uh, we have 16 year old, 16, 17 year old students. What will you tell to a student 17, 16, afraid to travel alone? This is like their first trip. Yeah, I would say be brave. It's a great, fantastic experience to come off here, out here on your own, live on your own. And you do learn a lot about yourself and about your ability to, you know, go somewhere and travel. My school, I went there for like a short, short class. Which one? Nice one. New York Film Academy. Oh, yeah. I saw it on YouTube. Oh, which video? A video on how to improve a uh, better score in GMAT. I subscribe to your channel. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, it's so cool. Thank you so much. <laughs> Where are you guys from? Um, i South Korea. South Korea. Going to South Korea in August. I'm so excited. Oh. Yeah. Vietnam? Cambodia. Wow. F and V. Could you give me one word that starts with F? Familiar. And then what's a word that begins with V? Volt. Volt. Did you say yeah? Like uh, electricity. And I want you to write them down on your whiteboard. So for example, if I say ferry, you could write ferry. F-E-R-R-Y. But if you mishear me, you might write down this one by accident. V-E-R-Y. Why? With the president's recommendation. Hmm. With the president's recommendation. H is adverse. Adverse. Uh, I is despite. 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 J is claustrophobia. Claustrophobia. Are you guys going to take Juma? Uh, we are preparing, but we not yet plan. Okay. But we are. I have taken Juma. You can ask me anything. <laughs> I would like to ask you too. You, I guess you got um, 116 for TOEFL. 117. Thank you so much. Thank you for letting me. I really enjoyed the class. It's nice to have you in class. I hope you learned something. I have, yes. <laughs> Hi right, guys, hope to see you soon. Yay, bye bye. All right. See ya. <laughs>like compared to LA you can walk here you can walk well if you're in the city center you can walk a lot in LA you cannot you only drive it's a little windy <laughs> but the weather is so cool Okay, that was it for me for today. I hope this video gives you confidence to start speaking English and stop worrying too much about your mistakes because 
everybody makes mistakes. Native speakers make mistakes. Uh, but what I notice here in the US, the most important thing is that you are understood. People don't really care how many mistakes you make while speaking. People care whether they understand you or not. Thank you so much, Venia, for bringing this milk tea. Cheers, guys, and um, wishing you happy English learning. Subscribe to this channel for more videos. Bye-bye.